Uh, now then, when 83-year-old Edna and 44-year-old Simon first fell in love, many doubted that their relationship would stand the test of time. But as the couple defy critics to celebrate their 14th anniversary together, Edna and Simon join us now in the studio, and it's lovely to see you both again. We've been following this story for quite a long time, actually, but for anybody that doesn't remember, because I think it was about five years ago that you were here, you met um, in 2003, and it was at an organ concert in Western Supermare. You describe it as love at first sight. It was indeed love yeah. at first sight, and it's still well. It's better is it? than it was then, isn't it? Oh, this is definitely. Yeah. Oh. So um, when you when you met first of all, um, did you take into consideration the gap in age? Well, of course we did. Uh, we saw each other on and off for some while, as normal couples do, and then Simon came down to stay in the January. And we talked for about 10 days to decide whether we, A, had a serious relationship yeah. and, B, mostly, was I being fair to Simon? Well, Simon, as he'll tell you himself, was worrying whether he was being fair to me, so that oh. should tell you something. What were your concerns, Simon? Sorry? What were you worried about? What were your concerns? Uh, my concern mainly was um, whether it would be a lot of effort for Ed to be married again because she'd been married previously. Right. And neither of us was looking for any kind of relationship, so it just happened. So I was really concerned about us getting together. Do we have a solid basis for a relationship? Yeah. You know, how's it going to be? Is anybody going to react adversely? It wasn't a major concern, but it's something you think about. And we talked about it, we chatted about it, and we said, no, it's fine. Let's go ahead and do it. And do it. And you did. And you got married. And the, the wedding was a 30s-themed wedding. You had a lovely Indeed. day. Very romantic. Indeed. What was that like? Incredible, well, Holly, it? it was absolutely incredible. It was like falling off a cliff covered in people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. We were covered in people like a rash. Mm. Most of them very nice. We invited a gentleman who I've been, with whom I've been friends for years, yeah. who worked for the Bristol paper, uh, to publicise this cinema organs, you know, which we were keeping alive and doing concerts about three or four times a month. And uh, the other one was the local photographer whom I'd known since he was at school. Right. And they were invited yeah. as guests. And um, we tried to go away on honeymoon and every road out of Somerset was completely <coughs> closed. Somerset was shut. And we were trying to go to Cornwall. Mm. So we had to wait. We got married on the Friday and we had to wait until the Monday at three o'clock in the morning we went on our honeymoon. Oh, that's right. Uh, and we got a phone call from my son saying, Mother, have you looked at the paper? I said, don't be silly, we're on our honeymoon. What are we doing reading the papers? <laughs> he said, I think you might like to. And we were uh, camping in Simon's father's caravan in a field not even near a tiny village in Cornwall and uh, I said, I better go into the village I can't even remember what it's called and we went in and asked if they got any papers and they all went <laughs> I thought, what was the people down here are going they're going we couldn't get a paper unobtainable it took us three days to get a paper and it was all over all the papers about this relationship and the fascination is is this age gap and some people have been unfair, they've been a little bit cruel about it. What what do you say to those people that say, you know, this is what you're what you're doing's wrong. This can't be true love. It just can't be that. Well, I'll answer that because Simon won't express his what he answered. <laughs> the only the really only time was we were walking up the seafront, holding hands as ever, and coming towards us were about five ladies who were about 70 as I was. And there was a bit of little bit of lip curling, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and Simon's repost could not possibly be broadcast live. I think we call it robust. It right. Robust <laughs> repost. Robust. <laughs> and so uh, what, about, um, what about families? Did it take them a while to get on board or were, were they, once they saw the both of you together, were they there straight away? Well, um, Ed's family were OK with it straight from the start. I don't think my parents were that keen on it, really. Right. Um, I don't think it bothered my father too much, uh, but um, my mother, I know, wasn't really that happy about it. But she did sort of go along with it, you know. I think the main concern was really whether uh, we were happy. And we are, you know. Well, I think after 14 years, anybody can see that. You have been quite sensible. You have thought about the future together. Of course. And, uh, and I know, Edna, it's something that you've, you've, you've put plans in place. Of course. Should the worst yeah. happen. Lots of people don't like to think about that. 
Why was it important for you to, to make a plan? Because I love Simon and I wouldn't want Simon to be in danger or hurt or distressed or alone more than he had to be. And I wanted to legally take as much care of him as I could so that it was all in place. So he has two appointed um, friends, one's my son, as power of attorney, enduring power of attorney to look after him. But with Simon's health constraints, it is very likely that I will outlive him, to be mm. truthful. Simon will yeah. confirm that. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Um, okay. And, uh, and as, as far as um, your... Because you, bo you both took part in the Channel 5 documentary recently, Age Gap Love, Did It Last? Yes. Um, and quite obviously, uh, we can see that it has, and it's as strong as ever. What makes it work for both of you? Well... I think one of the things that makes it work is the fact that it's a very symbiotic re relationship in the sense that we can't really be without each other. If one of us is away somewhere, the other one's always thinking about where are they, are they all right, you know. And we also have, on a purely practical level, we also have different disabilities. So what one can do, the other one can't do, and vice versa. So it's interlocked like that. Oh, but basically, we're just interdependent emotionally. Mm. We need each other. But you do in every respect. <laughs> you do keep the spark very much alive, though. I mean, I was I was just reading down, and the, the plans that you've got for the future. You like art. I mean, you like all of those sort of things, and you're planning and doing a bit of naked drawing. That's right. I'm hoping. Good that, for you. <laughs> I'm hoping that I'm going to take some photographs of Simon because people twitch; they can't sit still. Um, <laughs> Posed very carefully. Right, right. Uh, Tastefully. And one of my favourite views. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love you. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, well, tell it how it is. Girl. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Simon with no clothes on. And um, I'm going to do that in watercolour for him. Oh, uh, very lovely. And, uh, and you are not... Uh, he's using you're... a shatterproof camera, by <laughs> <laughs> You're not afraid of public uh, shows of emotion? When you go to the supermarket, you're very touchy-feely. Oh, well, good Lord, of course we're not, you know. And it's rather sad, actually, a lot of couples don't. Um, when you see a couple kissing in the street, I think it's wonderful. Yeah. Why not? We should show our emotions a bit more. You know, I love Ed, she loves me. Why what not? do you do? How do you show it? I pinch his bum. I'll do the same. <laughs> <laughs> and all the checkout people, obviously Western's quite a small town, they all love us. So we're very fortunate. We, <laughs> we, we know so many lovely, warm people. Mm. And uh, they expect us to still be behaving as we behave every day. Yeah. Look, this is how we are all the time. We go to sleep holding hands and we wake up holding hands. Oh, much, much, do you know, it's so nice because all we talk about is we hear about relationships falling apart mm. and things going wrong and relationships that only last for a few years and people falling out of love with each other. To actually sit here and just listen to a really true love story and that, that stood the test of time is wonderful. It really is. <laughs> well, we can't believe how lucky we are. And that's yeah, we've been very that's lucky. I cannot function without Simon. Mm. He is in my head, he's in my heart and I adore him. Well, that oh. is a lovely thing to hear. It is always a pleasure to have you both Thank here. Thank you both oh, very much. Kind Thank, of you you. Thank you for coming in pleasure again. Pleasure to be here. Uh, it's lovely Cheers. to see you. We'll see you for the next instalment of this story, I'm sure, in a few years' time. <laughs> well, Simon, well we wants hope so. his, Simon wants his silver wedding, so I have to be 95. Then. There you Fair go. Enough. I have no doubt <laughs> no that, doubt. that would be, that's very, very uh, achievable. Get it organised now. <laughs> Thank you both very much. <laughs> You're both amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.